Bruce, welcome back. What's it like to be a Seahawk again? Oh, man, it's almost as great as the night of 2000, April 27, 2012. The Seattle Seahawks select Bruce Irvin. Why do you think Seahawks fans love you so much? Uh, Cause I'm very blunt. I, I think they know that I'm not just, you know, another player that's that signed for a year or two. Like, you know, how I feel about their fans' grace is, is really from my heart and it's really genuine. In terms of pass rush in this defense, there's been so much talk this offseason about a player who's not even on the Seahawks right now, and that's Jadeveon Clowney. <laughs> Do you think this group of pass rushers feels disrespected at all because there's not a lot of talk about sort of the DNs that are on this team? I mean, I always feel disrespected. That's That's been my whole eight years. 60 tackles, I led the lead in forced fumbles, and I had most sex I ever had, and I still don't get no love. So at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a production business. And if we go out here, whether it's Jadavion Clowney, me, or whether it's Rasheem Green, as long as you produce, it don't matter what, what the name is, bro. It's about producing. And I think we got a great room, and I think we got a lot of guys who are capable of producing. You know, people get caught up on the big names. And don't get me wrong, Jadavion Clowney's a hell of a player. But uh, I also think we will be uh, pretty good without him. Uh, you talk about production. I mean, you've had at least eight sacks three times in your career. You think there's a double-digit sack season in you? Man, I need that. I mean, I still got nightmares about that. Man. You know, I had that's something that I really want to do, get double digits uh, in, the, in the NFL. So uh, I think I got a great chance of doing that this year. Uh, I'm very confident that it will happen before I retire. Are you bringing the Wipe Me Down celebration back to Seattle? I don't I don't know about the whole Wipe Me Down, but you know, I still do the little Clem uh, cross arm thing. <laughs> In the past, I mean, you've joked about your age. You're now 32 years old. What do you have left to prove? I still want to make a Pro Bowl. Uh, you know, I still got some personal achievements that I want to improve. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, I want to win another Super Bowl because, you know, that the parade was crazy. You know, at the end of the day, it's about getting back to that bowl and getting another ring for the city. You have two kids now, right? Two kids, two boys. What's harder, a quarterback sack or a full week in quarantine with your kids? <laughs> any day a full week of quarantine. It's been great. Uh, I wouldn't want it any other way, man. And, um, you know, it's just just hope everybody's been, been safe throughout this whole situation. How concerned are you about the virus when you're back at the VMAC, practicing, playing, traveling to games? I know they have health protocols in place, but how much of a concern is that? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really be thinking about, you know, I, not to say I'm not taking it serious, but I think when I get back to work, I ain't gonna be thinking about no damn Corona. I'm gonna be thinking about sacking Matt Ryan week one. You know, so <laughs> I think that all that stuff will work itself out, and hopefully we have fans and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm just ready to get back to work. You mentioned hopefully there will be fans. How how strange and different do you expect the season to be? It'll be definitely be weird, but uh, I think guys have to make adjustments, and I think uh, I think we'll make it make it. We'll make it work. We have no choice. The team had some difficult discussions non-related to football in terms of team oh, meetings man. and position group meetings amidst the protests this spring. Yeah. What impact did it have on you? I think it's great that Pete really uh, acknowledges the situation. You know, he knows what's going on in the world. He he's a, he, he addresses it. He obviously know that his football team makes up probably 60 to 70% is, is black dudes. That's the NFL in general. So I think it's really dope that, uh, you know, he – can say like you know I don't I've never been through that you know I've you know I don't know what it is to fear of getting pulled over or anything else but I I, I feel your pain you know I see what's going on and it's not right so uh, you know that's pretty much all you can want in your coach and uh, Pete is a great great guy he's an even better better person. What impact do you think those discussions will have on the team going forward now that everybody's been able to sort of air grievances air their unique perspectives and be able to share that with the entire group. I think we can move on now. I think guys uh, were, were, was able to get it off their chest and express their feelings and, you know, really have a, a group discussion about it. And hopefully when we get back, it could be all ball. Because ultimately, that's, what's, that's our livelihood. So, you know, it's messed up, but we have to, uh, we have to work. So uh, hopefully we, when we get back, it just be all ball and we just get right into things. You know, you were able to go to two Super Bowls in your first three years in the league. There was this attitude this defense brought when you were here. What do you think it has to do to get that attitude, that swagger back this season? To duplicate what we was doing those those years is, is really tough, man. Because we had a lot of interesting characters, uh, a lot of different personalities. But when it was time to work, you know, all those personalities messed together and we took care of business. If I remember the word they would use when we was a bunch of misfits. You know, you had me, you got Beast Mode, you got Cern, you got 
Michael Bennett, you know, so there's a lot of different personalities, man. So for this new team to, to try to even get similar uh, success, I just think, guys, we got to first and foremost be around each other uh, and uh, establish who the leaders are. And those leaders got to make sure they do a good job of leading, not only on the field, but off the field, you know, showing guys how to be a pro, showing guys how to steady, showing guys how to take care of their body. I just think for us to, to try to get to that type of level, it's going to take the leaders really pulling this thing together and ma making it happen pretty much. You talk about leadership. What made guys like, say, Brandon Meebane or Chris Clemens or Michael Bennett such great leaders that you hope to do as a leader on the defensive line this year? Particularly, I would say my first year, I would say I'm going to talk about Clem because, uh, you know, I was a first-round pick, 15th pick, and uh, basically I was Clem replacement at the time. You know, they was drafting me to replace Clem. Uh, he, it was no hard feelings, man. He took me under his wing. It was just, it was just all love. Hey, oh, yeah. Being that we both were from Atlanta, that helped too. So those guys were just really genuine guys. And when they learned my, my history and my background, what I went through, those guys just really wanted to see me be successful, man. And, uh, you know, it was really a blessing to have those guys. Last question, any message for the 12s who won't be at camp and unfortunately probably not filling up the stadium completely for the foreseeable future? Man, that just, that just hurt my heart. Uh, you know, being that yeah, it's my first year back and there ain't going to be no fans at camp, that's just terrible. I feel for you, but just know uh, we're going to work our tails off to, to bring us another ship back to Seattle uh, that you guys certainly deserve. And uh, just hope everybody's taking care of themselves. And uh, hopefully we see you all soon.